Amen. God bless you. You may have your seat. Thank you so much. Amen. Where are the nine? I'm intrigued um, this morning by this particular passage of scripture because we see several different elements regarding Jesus, his disciples, and about the ten men who were healed. And I kind of want us to walk through this um, this morning because we're going to see that Jesus is on a mission. The Bible tells us that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. Amen. Elder Jordan, he had death on his mind. He knew that he was going to die for the sins of our humanity. But while he was on his way, he encountered 10 men. I think it's noteworthy to say that as we look at verse number 11 that Jesus, when he's on his way to Jerusalem, he travels along the border of Samaria and Galilee. For those of you who read the Bible and come to Sunday school, you understand that Galilee was the place that Jesus was born. Amen. Jesus did an enormous amount of miracles in Galilee. It was where he was raised. It was where his family was, and he had a great deal of popularity in Galilee. Amen. Samaria, on the other mm -hmm. hand, was a different place. Right. He was traveling on the border between Samaria and Galilee, and Samaria was not necessarily a good place. Amen. Jews married individuals that were Assyrians, mm -hmm. and that's how they became Samaritans. Mm -hmm. The Jews intermarried mm -hmm. with many people from that Samaria area, and therefore many of the Samaritans were looked at as half-breed. Mm -hmm. You remember the story where the Bible says that Jesus must needs to go through Samaria? Mm -hmm. You remember that? He went through Samaria and he encountered um, the woman at the well. It said, the Bible said that he had need to go through Samaria. He had to go through um, a place where there was a lot of internal fighting, where people actually hated each other. Mm -hmm. So here's Jesus shifting from Galilee, his place of uh, popularity, a place where he was honored, and he's moving through Samaria. Mm -hmm. It's very key that you understand that. He moves through Samaria, and as he was going into a certain village, ten men who had leprosy met him. Mm -hmm. They stood in a distance, and they cried out with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. My translation said, they said, Jesus, have pity on me. Uh -huh. Now I don't know if you are familiar with the disease of leprosy, but let me just share a few things about that skin disease. Mm -hmm. It's a skin disease called leprosy. Mm -hmm. Leprosy was most feared, the most feared disease in all biblical history because number one, it was contagious. Mm -hmm. Number two, it was deadly. Yeah. It was a disease that caused the skin to discolor. Mm -hmm. The skin, the patches of skin would turn white or pink and it would spread all over the body and then it was so severe that it affected their internal organs. Jesus. Their internal organs were so affected that it causes severe nerve damage and it causes these individuals to be deformed mm -hmm. and it was especially seen in their hands and in their feet. So can you imagine, 
Jesus is encountering these ten men who don't look like ordinary people. Mm -hmm. They were deformed. There was a physical, there was physical evidence that these men had a sickness and they had an illness. They were crying out because they had been shunned by society. Mm. You have to know if you had leprosy, you could not intermingle with other people because it was contagious and because you were considered an effective person, you couldn't deal with other people. So here they are standing together and it's interesting that they're all in a group. Mm -hmm. You know, you gravitate to what you're going through. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you all hear me when I said that? Yes. A lot of times we gravitate to the same kind of people, um, especially if we're in a mess. Uh -huh. We seem uh -huh. to hang around messy people. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Jesus. They were all together and they encountered Jesus as he is passing through Samaria and they had enough sense, um, Brother Little, to call out to Jesus mm -hmm. and to ask him to have mercy on them. Uh -huh. Now I'm sure Reverend Lee that these individuals knew who Jesus was. I'm sure these ten men understood how powerful he was. They knew him to be a miracle worker. They knew him to open up blinded eyes. Uh -huh. They knew him to take two fishes and five loaves of bread and feed a whole family plus more. Uh -huh. They knew him to be the son of God the one who can do everything, the one that could cause miracles, the one that can turn things around. Mm -hmm. They had already contemplated, I'm sure, how they were going to reach out to Jesus. Yes. Isn't it interesting, though, that here are these men who are sick, and I'm sure they tried to obtain healing from various different sources. They at least had enough sense to call out to Jesus. Yes. Jesus hears their cry. And he says to them in verse number 14, when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Uh -huh. Notice, this was Jesus' response to them. He didn't say, be healed at first. He says, go show yourself to the priest. Well, what does that mean? Look real quickly with me. Go to the Old Testament book of Leviticus, chapter number 14. And let me show you something so that you and I both will be able to appreciate what's taking place in this text today. Leviticus chapter 14. Leviticus is right after the book of Exodus. Amen. And right before the book of Numbers. Leviticus chapter 14. Jesus says to them, go show yourself to the priest. Why? Because the priest had to authenticate their healing. Oh my God. Look at it, Leviticus chapter 14 and verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, these are the regulations for the diseased person at the time of his ceremonial cleansing. When he brought to the priest, the priest is to go outside the camp and examine him. If the person has been healed of his infectious skin disease, the priest shall order that two live clean birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop be brought for the one to be cleansed. Then the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He is then to take the live bird, dip it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times he shall sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the infectious disease and pronounce him clean. Then he is to be released the live bird in the open fields. The person to be cleansed must wash his clothes, shave off his hair, and bathe with water. Then he will be ceremonially clean. Now go back to Luke chapter 17. Jesus' response here to the, to the ten men was he says, go show yourself to the priest. Jesus, keeping with the law of Moses, tells them, I want you to go. Now that you have encountered me, I want you to go show yourself to the priest because the priest is going to authenticate your healing. Oh, now notice what the scripture says. And as they went, 
they were clean. Amen. Lord, help me today. Notice Deacon Bell again. His first response was not to be healed. He says, I want you to go to the priest. And he says, as you go, then you'll be healed. I want to say to you, beloved, the reason why so many of us cannot experience God's abundant blessings, his healing, his deliverance, and his breakthrough is because we won't step out on faith. It was until the men went that they received their healing. How many times does God tell us to do something and we don't do it? How many times does he tell us to go ahead and praise me in advance? I know you have a cut off notice tomorrow. I know that you're facing um, some bad news, but he says go ahead and praise me anyway. Go ahead and worship me anyway. Go ahead and step out on faith. Go ahead and pay your tithes anyway. I'm going to supply every one of your needs. He says as they went, Deacon Holland, that's when they were cleansed. One of them, look at verse number 15. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Now there's a lot more to this story than the fact that they were healed. That's right. All right? So here, one individual obviously went to the priest. And then he came back. Now Deacon, only God knows whether the other nine went. And I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure, Sister Emma, that the nine even went to the priest. 